We're excited to have our next guest back. He's a comedian, pastor, and founder of Operation Belly Laughs. I love that. And Belly Laughs provides comedy DVDs for our troops because they need some laughter. He and his wife, Dawn, were named Pennsylvania's Parents of the Year. And his first dry bar comedy special is coming up soon. Tonight, he's got something different and very special to share with us for Christmas. Would you please welcome back Gordon Douglas. <laughs> Merry Christmas, everyone. Did you hear it? Did you hear it? He mentions that I do comedy and I met people like Carol Burnett, Dick Van Dyke, Jay Leno, where everybody's like, yay, cool. And he's a pastor. Oh. <laughs> Loves Jesus, bummer, right? Hey, God has a sense of humor, amen? Yeah. It's good stuff. You take a comedian and put him in a pulpit, you're asking for trouble. <laughs> I was so excited when I became a pastor, I forgot to take the offering the first three weeks. <laughs> Ushers were in the back waving the offering plates. <laughs> I thought, what's that? Silent tambourines? What are they doing back there? <laughs> and it was an old church. How old? How old Half of this audience would be in my youth group right here. <laughs> it was an old church. The head of our deacon board, his social security number was six. <laughs> hey, the funniest thing that ever happened to me was at my first funeral. I wanted it to be perfect. I wrote out my scriptures and prayers on three by five cards, put them in my Bible, got up to the graveside, opened my Bible to read the prayer, and all my notes fell out into the grave. <laughs> it is a true story. I love it. I love to do comedy and preach. My favorite, do comedy Saturday night, stay over and preach the next day. I love doing that. I was at a big church down south. It had 6,000 people. Three bathrooms. <laughs> yeah. First, second, third, John. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, you guys are fun. No, I'm not lying. They had seven parking lots. To remember where your car was, they named the parking lots after the fruit of the Spirit. If you want love, joy, or peace, you got to show up early. <laughs> you come late, you're in long suffering. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> But you know, there are a lot of folks looking for love, joy, and peace today, aren't there? There's a lot of folks just not experiencing that Christmas joy. So I think back to my first Christmas as a pastor. I wanted Christmas Eve to be special, so I prayed, Lord, give me, give me a way to tell the world's greatest love story in a way that people wouldn't forget. And the Spirit of God came on me, and he gave me this. Trey, if you can tickle the ivories for me, kind of set that mood. You see... It was the night before Christmas and throughout Galilee, all the people were traveling cause Caesar made a decree. And to Bethlehem they went, it was no easy ride for Joseph and Mary, his pregnant young bride. And they were tired and weary. It was such a long trip and the hotels, well, they were booked up, but then they got a tip. A stable for my wife, Joseph said with a frown, but, but my Mary's in labor, she's, she's got to lie down. But it was out with the cattle, the sheep and the straw that the birth of our Savior came, the King, Lord of all. All those shepherds were gathered on the side of a hill, sheep nestled together, so run of the mill. But then the glory of God and his angels appeared. The shepherds were speechless, they trembled and feared. All glory to God and peace on the earth came a message of joy announcing Christ's birth. So off to the stables, their courses they flew to find a Messiah in a manger and swaddling close to. Oh, but they found that young couple so humble and mild. They knew in a moment <clears throat> this was the Christ child. But over in Persia, there rose such a clatter that the Magi were summoned to see what was the matter. And what to their studious eyes should appear but, but a new star up in heaven so bright and so clear. Over mountains, through deserts, no armies or beasts could hinder the journey of those kings of the east. They stopped in at Herod's. They shared the good news. We've just seen the star of the king of the Jews. Well, Satan heard too, and he went right to work. He called a big meeting, then turned with a jerk. And the demons then plotted a sinister plan. 
We'll kill all the babies. We'll use Herod, our man. But while Joseph was sleeping, that long winter snooze, an angel came and said, get up, there's no time to lose. And they got up at once and to Egypt they fled, where they waited and waited till Herod was dead. Well, Jesus grew up. He, he was a godly young man. Now he was ready to fulfill God's plan. The gospel, God's kingdom, is what Her was what Jesus taught, and many a miracle from his hand was wrought. But then came a strange day. It was at the Passover feast. Satan used a disciple to betray him, that devious beast. Jesus was broken and beaten. There was sorrow, such grief. Those thorns, they encircled Christ's head like a wreath. And Mary's precious young baby, the fruit of her womb, lay lifeless and still in a cold, borrowed tomb. But after three days, he arose in a flash. He loosed all the captives and tore open the temple sash. And then he proclaimed as he rose out of sight, go tell all the nations, there's forgiveness tonight. Oh, oh, and love one another till I come again. Oh, you better be ready. You won't know just when. Well, it's a few weeks before Christmas. What would he say if that King of glory were to come back today? Friends, there's no need for the grief or the doubt. The Messiah has come, so don't be left out. When he opens his book, will he find your name? Or will you stand condemned with your head hung in shame? These days before Christmas, those angels still sing each time that a person makes Jesus their king. He reigns now in heaven on his throne up above, still offering to each of us the gift of his love, forgiveness, and heaven. <laughs> that is hard to conceive, but that's what God promises if you'll just believe. So if you haven't, oh, please, trust him, my friends. He'll make your life right. It's the reason for this season. God bless you, and good night. That was beautiful, Gordon. I think you just told us, but I was going to ask you, how do, how do you keep the traditions of Christ in your Christmas, in your family? Yeah, well, last time we mentioned, you know, we have 24 children that we've taken in. Wow. In addition to the five birth kids God surprised us with. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and really, we want them first to know it's about giving, not getting. Yeah. So when my kids were little, we used to give them all $5, and they had to support a missionary. And before they could open their gift, they had to tell us about the missionary they picked and why. Uh -huh. And now that they're adults, we still keep that tradition going. I love that. What a great okay. reminder of why there is a Christmas season. By the way, look for Gordon Douglas's new Dry Bar Comedy Special coming soon and check out his book. It's called Growth Spurts and Growing Pains and a whole lot more. Go to Huckabee.tv. We have a lot of information on Gordon Douglas that you're going to want to see. Hey, thanks for sticking around. Since you made it here to the end, that must mean you like the video. So you might as well subscribe and hit that notification bell below. But if you really hated it, just click the like button three times.